drupal.org. Right now, they are published as the general project type, which when you add any project on drupal.org, you can add modules, themes, whatever. One of those is the general project type, and you can publish a recipe that way. We will probably, as we are working on the project browser, um, be working on a better way to display them both on drupal.org and within the project browser flagged as a recipe category. But they'll, they'll work more or less like any other project published to D.O. So just one more thing I want to add is that we are planning to expose a feature list of, of recipes or recipe starter kits within the Starshot project. But within that same interface, we can also show an option where, it's like, uh, where it says something like more uh, options or community uh, recipes. And then you can browse from community provided recipes through that same interface. But I guess what I want to make very clear is that that's going to be, uh, the, the featured recipes are going to be listed as the recommended way of getting started with Drupal. And maybe we can explore the idea of getting, having community maintained recipes be part of the featured set. Yeah, that'll, the that'll be the second future. trip to the moon. Or maybe the yes. maybe the maybe the first like uh, moon buggy drive. So who will decide which recipes get included, and how can the community give feedback about uh, what they would want? Because that so great question. I'll repeat it. Um, who decides which recipes get included as these featured recipes, um, and how does the community give feedback on those those decisions? So there's going to be a, go a new governance model in the Starshot project, which uh, Dries is, is leading, and he's. Uh, uh, planning to set up a team that is leading the Starshot. And as part of that team, there's going to be product managers, there's going to be um, user experience lead, um, some other roles like technical lead. And that group of people is, is going to be the ones ultimately making the decisions. What they're going to do is they're, they're going to do research, which means that opening public issues in the issue queue and, and organizing meetings with the community members to collect feedback. They aggregate that and then make decisions based on that to, to see what they believe is right for the One uh, thing I, whole community and user base at large. There is now a drupal.org slash project slash starshot, um, which Gabor just, like, just set up. Um, and so one of the things that you can do while they're still figuring out the governance model is someone might, in this room, might want to say, I open an issue that says collect feedback from nonprofits and, um, and start aggregating some of that, right? Okay, uh, yes. solved. So, okay, we've got a few more going here. I'm going to go here and then you. This is a good question. A Actually, really a really question, nice yeah. idea. It's pr pretty much a Drupal.org idea. Is basically, could we badge or otherwise indicate on the module pages of the ones that were selected for Starshot that they are Starshot modules or Starshot approved or Starshot vet, whatever it is? Then we're we're all using the code name. <laughs> um, <laughs> that probably won't be the final branding, but anyway, um, I think that's kind of a great idea because it it is sort of among other things, right? If we're telling people in general, we think these are the things you should probably start a site with, if someone happens to not be using Starshot off the bat and is still browsing Drupal.org to find a module, we probably still want to push them to those things too. So I think that's a good idea. Um, yeah, there isn't yeah. a plan yet, but I'm going to write it down. Yeah, that's that would be something to include in Project Browser as well as a filter. And I think they would also be taken into account in the credit weighting system where the yeah. Starshot projects will probably get higher weights for credits to encourage uh, companies to contribute to those more. Yeah, I think those are all good things. Yeah, repeating really quickly, what will the release schedule and relationship between Drupal core, which will remain and will be a foundational component of Starshot, 
and Starshot be if Starshot is on a much accelerated innovation and release cycle? How will those two kind of interact with each other um, and hopefully not get out of sync with each other in some way? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think how the, so we are still figuring out how the exact innovation model will work between uh, the core and, uh, and, and Starshot, but where we get the increased ve velocity is because if we can fund and improve the contributed modules that are shipped within Starshot, and they are not bound by the core release cycle, meaning that we could have releases coming out once a week for the different modules. Um, Core has quite high expectations on stability, quality, and all of that, which means that um, we have to be quite strict about what kind of changes we can introduce and uh, and when. So, w and the reason for that is because of basically, if you change something in Core, that impacts all of Contrib Im immediately when you make that change. Whereas if you make something uh, when you make a change in a Contrib module, there's much less likelihood that it actually spirals down the the ecosystem. And uh, historically, where at least a Drupal core team has tried to innovate has been in core, but that's actually where the innovation is slowest because you have to fo focus on making sure that th you don't introduce these changes that trickle down the ecosystem. So what we're going to do is move some of that focus and funding towards making innovation in areas where there's less friction to, to making improvement. Um, it's, it's kind of coming from this realization that even though Drupal core is used by everyone, but no one is actually using Drupal core solely. The experience of using Drupal is that it's Drupal core plus 50 to 100 contributed modules. So maybe when we look at what we should be improving, we should look at that set of modules and see what are the most critical aspects for us to improve and that represent the set of contributed modules that most people are using. Or how does the UI look like when you have 50 modules enabled and like all the menus blow up and that kind of stuff? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know if you've noticed, but we've been decreasing the modules in Drupal core for a while. So we removed a bunch of stuff in Drupal 10. We will remove, I think, six or seven modules in, in Drupal 11. And that includes, for example, the statistics module that somebody picked up in France and they want to do this beautiful privacy conscious uh, tracking thing. That's chef's kiss. Um, and that's what that's what we want to see because that didn't get any love in Drupal core and that's the kind of thing that nonprofits would love to have as well is to have like a nice privacy conscious um, a user tracking and information of who's visiting our site and if so we've seen that if we move these features to contrib that are not critical to the whole ecosystem they could work much better in contrib and so we will continue to remove things from core that are not foundational for the ecosystem and we may add some things from the Starshot modules to core that are foundational to the ecosystem. So for example, the experience builder we hope to add to core eventually when it's good enough, because we think that that's gonna set up an ecosystem of things that, that is best to be in core. Yeah. But the idea is to keep the things that are not foundational as contrib and include them in the recipes and keep core lean and, and have this stability be the role of core going forward as much as, as possible. And there's a there's an interesting graphic that Dries has been using. I don't know if he used it in any of the public presentations yet, but he's like the graphic on a graphic that on one side is like high stability, slow movement, on the other side is low stability, fast movement. And one of the points that he was he's been making is um, we cannot claim that we are high stability, low movement, because all our actual users are over here with that 150 modules and that are moving quickly and possibly changing. So when we're actually giving, we're actually probably gonna be, it's probably going to be less likely that fast moving contrib will break a site from now on than it is today, just because it will actually be getting core attention and core, core resources and the hygiene around semantic versioning should be better and all of these things. So it's probably going to be an improve, a net improvement even though it sounds like we're like introducing more because those are already there for all these sites and not getting that attention today. So, um, news, we have the one and only issue on the Starshot project. <laughs> 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 hey. All right. Congrats. Very good. Way so we way have to take initiative. <laughs> I think we have about 10 minutes. We go to noon. So any more questions or comments? Ooh, that's a good one to think about. I can take a question while you're pondering it, though. I thought I saw an arm going up.
Yeah, they can. No, yeah, they, they, they exist as projects. So, which means they can have all the associated infrastructure around them. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's a good question. That's, um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so the, the first question was, um, what was the first half? <laughs> oh, where would, uh, where would recipes live in terms of their repositories and contributing to them and all these things? And yeah, they can have project pages on Drupal.org just like anything else so that they can be contributed to, issues can be open, they can be collaborated on. Uh, the second question was about the project browser and basically providing quality indicators to people choosing which projects to install, right? And so the project browser team has spent a lot of time thinking about this, and so one of the things they've done is they've massively changed the way we categorize projects to make them more useful. They highlight things like which ones have the opt-in to security coverage, number of installs, which is a pr sometimes a proxy for quality and sometimes misleading. Um, ratings specifically was the question, though, having user ratings. I know they've discussed it. I do not know what the outcome or where on the roadmap, if they decided to do it, that is. So you might want to check next door with some of the PB folks. Um, okay. So I don't have a question right now, but we will have a lot of questions for you. So if you want to sign up on this issue, go there on the issue and, and, vol and volunteer yourself for user interviews. And then we would get to know more of what you want out of Starshot and how we could make Starshot better for you. So that's a good place. I'm not going to promise that we'll interview everybody that comments there. It's probably going to be overwhelming for us as well but we'll uh, try to uh, get to some of you and get more input for Starshot. Yeah, there's also... I will also note that we have a gathering of this group of people every month mm -hmm. um, on Zoom, and you are more than welcome to come and gather yeah. feedback as Christina says, sort of focus group from multiple users, not just one at a time. Perfect. Cool. So we're doing cool. good on time, but any final questions or final thoughts? Um, sounds, great. sounds great. See, that's <laughs> what I like to hear. Lunch. That's, all right. Uh, yes. Uh, so this is an interesting question. I think the answer is yes. I'm going to take a stab at it, which is to say, um, this goes back to, so the question was, is there an idea of having either star shots or a component of the project browser or recipes, something like this, that is like, install a use case, don't install a feature or don't install a thing. And that is actually, I think, I think the, um, the spectrum of what a recipe could be includes that. So there are going to be some that are very sort of speech, feature specific in their nature, but I also fully expect there to be a, you know, here's the, to use your example, here's the digital signing publishing endpoint recipe or whatever, like this kind of thing is. So I think that's gonna depend partly on the kinds of recipes that get developed as the initial examples people see in the featured Starshot recipes, but also the ones that get picked up by the community. So. Um, but it should be totally possible within what those were designed to do. I agree that, yeah, the, the idea is to, to create recipes that are specific to use cases. The use cases could be ranging from simple use cases to more complex use cases. Um, we're also looking into the flavors of Starshot, and those will be also focused around use cases. So you could have a nonprofit uh, starting point. You could have a magazine site uh, starting point, and then the featured recipes that we show would be customized based on uh, what was the original intent of the site that you, you were setting up. And remember, multiple flavors are not in the initial launch, but. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me, I know this is a lead, but I'm gonna ask anyway, because this question uh, made me think of it, is uh, with regards to like, especially when you 
content types with regards to the blessed um, scar shot recipes. Is there going to be an effort to integrate that into like a schema.org? Because uh, Jay Rockowitz has done a ton of work on that in the last couple of years. This is, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually broaden your question, which is to say, um, is the process of selecting some of these recipes or modules going to start blessing certain things as best practices within Drupal more broadly? That might be schema.org integration for, for content type data structure. That could be a variety of other best cases. And do we see that becoming sort of a, an informal, here's our most recommended decision for doing something further in Drupal? So I think that's going to be part of the consideration, but we are very focused on the use cases of what would the, someone want to achieve with the content type or the feature that we're delivering. So we are going to give different kinds of considerations to when we when we develop the the content types. Right, so there's the potential that it won't match what schema.org thinks is the best. Yeah, so the, is, we, I guess what I'm saying is that we want to give that a consideration, but sometimes there could be strong reasons to why you don't want to match that because of maybe the use case is not entirely mapped into what schema.org provides you. And then it's a question of can we influence them to see if we can get it closer to what we think it should be. And I want to highlight what just happened here, which is to say, <laughs> like, core product lead for Drupal just said that the user experience needs may override the sense of technical perfection that a particular thing provides, right? We've often been very bottom up from saying what is the like ideologically pure, technically pure way to implement something. And Lori is being, it's pushing back on that to say we are going to be user, user focused, not because we want to create junk code just for the sake of shipping something, but because we actually want to make sure it's serving those specific cases. Um, cool. I think probably we'll wrap here with just a little extra time so you can tell people what's going to happen after lunch and all that stuff. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Let's go get in line before the government people. And then come back here at 11.30.